Hey, I'm Crafty Salamander and I'm the main developer of RTS Overlay. If you discover it with this video, RTS Overlay is the overlay you can see on the top right part of the screen to display build orders. It does not interact with the game, meaning no screen analysis, no mouse or keyboard interaction. Updating the build order is done manually with buttons, hotkeys or using a timer. You currently see it for Age of Empires 2, but it also supports Age of Empires 4 and Starcraft 2. On top of that, I plan to add other RTS games like Age of Mythology Retold, Stormgate and others. For each game, you can already find one or several build order websites which allow you to export the build orders in correct format, as well as some content creators using the overlay. The overlay already existed as a Python project available from source or from a pre-compiled executable. Unfortunately, some antivirus softwares do not like executable downloaded from the internet. So today, let me introduce a second method to use the overlay through the website rts-overlay.github.io. This means you can now test and use the overlay without installing it. Just follow the link in the video description. I will show it for Age of Empires 2, but it also works for all the other games. You will see how it looks like when playing, and I will also quickly show the small differences between the web-based and Python solutions. First, let's see how to use the web-based overlay. We will first start by reaching rtsoverlay.github.io, and here is the main page. Here you can find some instructions, but we will skip it uh, for now, uh, I will explain most of it. First thing, let's choose a game, we'll stay with Age of Empires 2. And one f interesting thing is that you can over on a button to uh, get uh, some hints about it. And this first button is about downloading a local copy of the overlay, which I would uh, highly recommend in case you want to have uh, something uh, running uh, a bit faster. And for this, there are two solutions. The first solution is just clicking on uh, the button here. And then after that, you will uh, go to the, your download folder and unzip the folder here. So it should be pretty fast here. And then you just need to go to docs and uh, launch index.html. And now you have the website. It's the exact same thing as uh, online, but uh, running locally on a computer. Second solution, it might be even uh, easier, is just to click on the install button that you have on uh, the URL tab. Now, if I want to reach RTS overlay, I can just open it like any other application. And if I want to remove it, I can remove it like any other application. We'll continue with this for uh, this demo. So, at the moment, there is no build order in our library. And first thing, we'll look uh, for a build order from an external website, in this case, buildorder.guide.com. So, I will take uh, any build order, for instance, uh, this uh, one stable uh, scout build order. And you can see that there is a button to copy it to your clipboard. So now I just need to replace this text by the one I copied and the build order is ready. You can still adapt it here. I will just adapt the title. And if you want to save it, the first solution is to click on export file. Then looking in the download folder, you can find the build order which is saved here. So would I reload the overlay? We can just drag and drop. And now you have back the build order. A second solution to save your build order is to add it to your library. This will in fact add it to your local storage. You must just click on the corresponding button and uh, confirm that you want to save it. And now the build order is saved in the library. So here I am just uh, downloading a few extra build orders uh, from buildorderguide.com, so running it a bit faster. Uh, there is really nothing new in this case. <laughs> Now, I would like to show you how you can design your own build orders. First, click on Reset Build Order and give it a name, so it's your Persian Scout opening. And you can see uh, on the top that we can validate if the build order is valid or not. If the build order is not valid, then you will get a message explaining what is the error, as you can see here. Then, uh, le let's select the uh, civilization, which is Persian here. I just clicked on uh, the corresponding uh, button uh, below, and I can just paste it. And now, the only thing uh, that uh, really remains is uh, to fill all the steps uh, of the build order. My, uh, during my first step, I will have six villagers, six uh, on food, and I write build two uh, houses. 
To select the house, what I just did was uh, to select uh, the corresponding uh, image selection category, in this case other, clicking on the house button and that will paste uh, its content to my uh, mouse uh, clipboard and then I can just paste it. And we continue filling the other steps like this. We can see that uh, each time we click on add step, the number of uh, villagers uh, per source is saved and that we just need to update uh, the difference. So I will not do all the build order like this. Uh, I just already saved uh, the build order before. I will just drag and drop the full build order. And here you can see the final results. So you can look on the left, see uh, what is uh, the final output. And finally, there is also a button to evaluate the timing of each app based on the number of villagers, the technologies from the town center, and so on. And finally, I add it to the library like for all the other build orders. Now, if I close uh, the build order, so here I close everything, I reopen RTS overlay, and I can look for my different build orders. Here, I will only see the generic ones so, uh, that you can see here, so I can also put uh, some, uh, uh, some keywords to find it, or I can uh, look for build orders for Khmer's. So here, uh, all the build orders, so two for Khmer's and two generic ones, so generic uh, are also valid for Khmer's, uh, Khmer uh, sieve, of course. And now let's select uh, the Persian uh, build order that uh, we just designed. So it was the Persian Scouts opening. Now we find it back here and uh, are ready to use. So to use it, we can uh, first adapt a bit uh, the font size uh, to your screen, the size of the images. So you're just using the sliders here, so you can see it's pretty easy to use. You can also say if the overlay will be located on the left or right part of your screen. I will display it on the right. And finally, we can click on this uh, play on overlay. But there is a last important thing uh, which is important to know, is that if you will need an always on top application uh, for this. I would recommend using Microsoft Power Toys. It is free, developed by Microsoft, and available on the Microsoft Store. Now, when I click on the display overlay, you can see that uh, the overlay appears, but each time I'm clicking somewhere else, the overlay disappears. But if I use the uh, Windows plus Control plus T hotkey from uh, Power Toys, I can uh, keep it as always on top applications. So you can see I can click anywhere else on the screen and the application will stay on top of it, which of course is super important when playing so that uh, the overlay doesn't disappear each time you are clicking on something. So now to use the overlay, you can just click on the arrows here to select uh, the step. So while you are playing, you can uh, update the steps or use uh, some hotkeys. So in this case, uh, by default, you can use the arrow hotkeys to do the exact same thing uh, without uh, pressing the buttons. But you still need to have the focus uh, on the window for this. Another solution is to click on this button so that we have now the timing feature. So in this case, the arrows or uh, the arrow keys will adapt uh, the timing. You can also reset it or launch it. And you can see here the timing uh, starts uh, to trigger automatically, indicating in blue here what is the current step uh, to perform. So here I'm playing a bit uh, with uh, the chrono uh, going a bit faster than reality to show what happens. So as soon as we reach the end of a step, we reach uh, the next step and we can always see what was the previous uh, item to perform, so the previous node to perform, and the next one. Let's take a look at this build order in action. So here I'm starting the game and I'm re ready to play, play with it. So first I start playing normally, but I could already read that the first instruction was to build two houses and to send the six first villagers to sheep. So in this case it's a pig, but it's uh, the same idea. You can see that uh, the, here I chose the timer feature, but it's not yet uh, starting. And I put it to uh, for, uh, 45 uh, seconds and I will wait uh, for uh, the real t game timer to reach 45 seconds to launch uh, the overlay. So here I'm ready, clicking and up the, the overlay timer is starting and you can see that uh, it's indeed in sync uh, with uh, the real timer that you can see on the top of the screen. And uh, then I can uh, focus now on the playing the game, so still uh, sending my first six villagers uh, to sheep, or in this case to pig, and I can see now that the next instruction is to send the next three villagers to wood and to build the first lumber camp, which uh, I will be doing just here. 
So here I'm running uh, the recording a bit faster uh, so that uh, uh, you can see uh, the full build order in action. So we're going to continue sending all the villagers there. Reading the next instruction is to lure the first boar, so uh, setting the villagers there. And like this, you can see uh, uh, the build order in action. Something else interesting uh, to note is that uh, for each step, you can see the number of resources uh, to reach at the end uh, of each step. So number of villagers that need uh, to be on wood, on food, and the t uh, on gold and on stone, and also the total number of villagers to reach uh, at the end of each step, each time being updated uh, with a new step. So now it's uh, time to lure the second uh, uh, boar, which did not follow me in this recording first, but uh, things like this happen. So we'll soon reach the end uh, of uh, the Dark Age, and uh, yeah, here I would have lost uh, my scout if it was a real opponent and not an AI. So still one, uh, still one villager and researching loom before clicking to the next age. And you can see that we are still in sync with the build order uh, overlay. So it's a very good uh, solution to uh, train to practice uh, some build orders and uh, to check if you are uh, on time uh, with all the instructions. So now we can see we are uh, aging up, uh, we are building the, bar uh, the barracks and uh, we will soon reach uh, the feudal age, which will uh, be basically uh, the end of uh, this build order uh, demonstration. Okay, reaching the end, we start building the stable, we will be producing the scouts, researching uh, the techs, uh, the technologies, and uh, basically that's it. Finally, let's compare the web-based and Python solutions. You have on top the Python solution and the web-based on the bottom that we just saw. There are two main differences. The first one is that the Python solution allows you to see what is behind the window and also to click on what is behind the window, except for the buttons of the overlay, as you can see here. This is not possible for the web-based solution. The second difference is, is that uh, while both solutions uh, accept hotkeys uh, to, uh, to perform some turn actions, like for instance I'm using the space bar to start the build order, this only works globally for the Python overlay. So what I mean there is that here I'm starting the both overlay at the same time by pressing the space bar, but then now I would like uh, to uh, do it while playing in game, and here you can see that only the Python overlay uh, is starting because the hotkeys for the web-based solution only work when the focus is on the window. Let's see how it looks like in-game. And for this, I will open Age of Empires 2 and launch a single skirmish game. Game is starting, I'm ready to press on the spacebar to select my town center and launch uh, the overlay. I just did it, so I, w I could select my town center with the spacebar, and you can see that the Python overlay indeed started, but not the web-based overlay. For this, I will set its timer with an offset of 20 seconds here, and now, yeah, clicking just right now to uh, activate uh, the, uh, the web-based overlay, and now both overlays are in sync. So both solution works, but you can see that the Python solution is slightly easier in this case.